What we're going to do in this video is look at resolving a vector into its components. And when we say components, we mean an x component and a y component. So we're going to be, I'm going to start by just taking a random vector, um, which is going to go from there to there, but this time we're going to put it onto a Cartesian xy coordinate grid with the tail of the vector at the origin. And what we're going to do is we're going to split it up into two perpendicular components and those components are going to form a right angle so effectively this is like the opposite of the tip to tail rule we're starting with the resultant vector and what we're going to do is we're going to create two vectors that run tip to tail to create this resultant vector here but they're going to be perpendicular to each other so they're a very special pair of components because one is going to be pure x and the other one is going to be pure y and together they're going to make up this original vector Okay, so let's do that. Um, here is the x component or the x vector and going up this way is the y component. Okay, so we can see there we have, let's put some labels on this. We're going to put this, um, I'm going to call this v for vector or for velocity maybe or something like that. And you can see it's acting at a certain angle theta with the x-axis and it's important to draw your angles to the x-axis because in most cases when you see questions like this or when you want to do problems like this you want to measure your angles from the x-axis or they're already going to be given from the x-axis okay so so that's that um, now this is what we call the x component of the vector all right i'm going to call it v sub x and this is the y component of the vector which I'm going to call V sub Y. So this is VX and this is VY. Now, as you can see, this one runs purely along the X axis and this one's, one runs purely up the Y axis. And in actual fact, um, you can actually put this vector over here and it's the same vector, obviously, because you haven't changed the magnitude or the direction. So you can, um, and it's very often written there like that on the axis itself. So VX is over here, VY is up there, and together they make up V and they're called the components or the x and y component of a vector. I'm going to put it back over here because I like the way this makes up a, a right angle triangle. We know the rules of right angle triangles and so we can manipulate that quite easily. But let's have a look at how the x and y components change as the actual uh, resultant vector or the original vector changes. I've got um, a little applet here from FET and if you haven't checked out FET yet you should. There are a huge amount of very very good uh, Java applets for all sorts of physics and all, all the sciences actually so have a look at FET I'm incredibly grateful for their work because it helps me a lot in my teaching so here's here's a vector similar to what we had before and we can show the components in various different ways there they are on the axes so this is the X component this is the Y component we can show them as a triangle like that or um, well actually style 3 is the same style 1 here but that's because this one's down on the origin because actually we can move this away from the origin and, and, and the components come with it so but let's put that back there where it was and I'm going to go for style 2 because I like the triangle nature of it so you can see that as you move the tip of this vector whoops the components will change as a result and you can see that as the vector as the angle reduces and gets closer towards the vector gets close towards the x-axis, the angle reduces down towards zero. The x component gets much bigger and the y component gets much smaller. And that's because, obviously, I mean, if you think about it, this y component is a projection of this vector onto the y-axis. If you had a light over here and you shone the light, that's where the shadow would be. And similarly with the x component, this component here is a projection of this vector onto the x-axis. So it's how much of this vector is acting in the x-direction effectively. And this one is how much of the vector is acting in the y-direction. And as the vector changes, as the angle or the magnitude changes, you can see how the components change with it. All right, so that when we get up here, we've got hardly any x vector left and actually if we put it right on the y axis you can see that there's zero x component because it's just it it's now become a pure y vector and therefore there is no x component there is no projection or shadow or whatever you want to call it okay so they kind of follow it around as it as it changes but in all cases the y vector is as tall as the vector itself and the x vector is as long as the vector itself and when you put them together tip to tail it creates two components that add to the original vector that you have. So, okay, so that's a nice little, little applet. 
All right, so what we've got here is original vector V, Vx, which is the X component, and Vy, which is the Y component. All right, so how does that all look mathematically? <coughs> well, we need to look at two things when we're looking at the, the algebra or the trigonometry or the maths in general of vectors. So let's draw our, our original vector back in again. All right, there it is. Um, and let's draw our components as well. So we've got the X component down here. It's about there, I think. And the Y component up here. It goes up to the tip of the vector there. All right. Now, if we say that this is vector V, then this angle is theta. Then we've got a situation where we can find the length of the other two sides because this is just a right angle triangle and we know the rules of right angle triangle specifically Sokotoa. So we can use Sokotoa in order to find the lengths of these two lines which would be very very useful because we want to know the lengths of these two lines because then we can manipulate them in each the x and the y direction. So if you work through Sokotoa and I'm not going to do that here and you rearrange Sokotoa you can see that this one the x component is going to be sorry this um, this keeps doing that I just got to get rid of that and draw that again because it's my little graphics tablet so that the x component is equal to the original vector itself multiplied by the cosine of the angle there all right because obviously this side is the adjacent side to that angle and therefore we're going to use the cosine to find out what that side is and vy which is up here is going to be equal to the original vector multiplied by the sine of the angle okay so down here we've got v cos theta and up this way we've got v sine theta so using theta and v we can find the length of the other two sides purely using Sokotoa if it's forces we've got another example over here this is more general fx the x component of the force vector is equal to f cos theta and the y component is equal to f sine theta sine because it's the opposite side to the angle cos because it's the adjacent side now if your angle is with the y-axis or anywhere else these things are going to change and it's much better to remember these and actually these are in your data book as well specifically like that um, and work out what the angle is to the x-axis and then your x component is going to be using the cosine and the y component is going to be using the sine and it's easy to remember because sine has a y sound in the middle sine so that's the y component okay so that's how you would um, find out the values of the uh, the x and y components of a vector just one more thing let's just go back to this fat animation here because we're in this quadrant of the graph both the x and the y coordinates are positive but we can actually move the vector around so that it becomes it points in this direction obviously there's nothing wrong with a vector pointing up to the left but now what you can see is we've gone back the other side of the origin with the x-axis and so the x component of this vector has become negative the y is still positive but the x is negative and if we go the other way we can take it all the way down here and we can see that now the x component is positive but the y component is negative so here in this quadrant you've got uh, negative y components and positive x components here they're both positive here the x component is, neg is negative and the y is positive and down here in this quadrant they're both negative. We've got a negative y and a negative x. And that's all you need to know about the components of a vector.